Hi gang, I'm Dan Spencer from REMC15 in the Jackson County ISD. Welcome to another REMC Connected Educator Series Showcase. Today we're going to feature Nick Provenzano. Now, Nick teaches English over at Gross Point South High School, and he's going to share with us some ways that he and his students use blogs in the classroom. Now, one thing I want to remind you of is the big idea here isn't to copy Nick exactly, but to look at some of the unique ways that he's using blogs, and then to take what you see here and tweak them to make them work in your own situation. We hope you get some great ideas from this, and enjoy. Knocking down walls, connecting students with blogging. This is Nicholas Provenzano. I'm a teacher at Gross Point South High School. I teach English. I'm also a curriculum technology specialist. I blog regularly on my site, thenerdyteacher.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, at thenerdyteacher. I'm here today to talk about using blogging in schools. And this is my presentation, Knocking Down Walls, Connecting Students with Blogging. So the big question is, how can blogging be used in education? Well, it really can be used from a professional standpoint. So as we look at teachers, we need to think about how we can use blogging as professionals. One way to do it is to use it for technology resources. This is one of the ways I use it. I have a site for my school district called Provenzano's GPS Tech Guide. And what I do for this is I put tips and tricks for my teachers in my district, and really anyone that can get to the site, to see some of the cool things that are out there for technology. Another thing to use it for is, of course, your subject area. Now, English, science, social studies, math, art, music, etc., these can all be used for you to store and share ideas on your particular subject area. So subject areas are also a nice spot to put blogs. Now blogging can also be used as a personal place. For me, I use it for thenerdyteacher.com. It's a place where I put my thoughts and ideas in regards to tons of different educational ideas. Sometimes I'll do product reviews. Sometimes I'll just talk about lessons I'm doing in my classroom. Uh, it's a great place to share those ideas with other people. And of course, there's the classroom use. The classroom use is huge. One of the things that I do is I use it for class blogging using kidblog.org. I love kidblog.org. One of the things that I do is that I have kids take notes in class and then post them using kidblog. All of them have their own personal accounts, and every day I have kids go up to my little blogging area and log into KidBlog and take notes for the day and post it there. It's great for students that are absent, that leave early due to dentist appointments, or if they have sporting events they need to go to. KidBlog.org is a great place that I use to store those blogs and those notes for all kids to see. And the great part of it is, is that parents have access to it as well. So parents can jump on board and see what kids are doing in class. So what do you need? Well, you need a computer, you need internet access, and you need space. Space in your room to create a nice area for kids to sit with this computer and do the blogging. And then a KidBlog account. KidBlog is absolutely free. It does not require student email addresses. So as a teacher, you can set it up, create your account, create logins for the students, and then you're all set. So it's a great way to use the blogging. Another great way to use blogging is literature circles. I'm a big fan of this for literature circles for the blogs. So what I did was, working with a friend out in Van Meter, Iowa, we set our students up into particular blog groups. And what we would do is we would post ideas or questions on the blog for students to respond to. And those students that were in a particular lit circle would respond to those questions and then have questions of their own. So what you would get is this nice conversation built around their in particular lit circle using kinblog.org. So I loved having this opportunity now is that the lit circles were no longer contained to the classroom, but the walls had been knocked down and now students were having conversations with other students from across the country. It can also be used for large projects. One of the big large projects that I did was my 
epic Romeo and Juliet project. This project was an intense project. What it did was take two schools from across the country and they put together a joint production of Romeo and Juliet using tons of Web 2.0 tools. But one of the things blogs did was allowed kids to have an independent space to write their ideas down about what they thought about the project, to share their thoughts, to comment on how it was going, what problems they were having. It was a nice location to do all of that. Well, one of the things you should do, though, when you have a lot of students using blogs, is find a way to organize it. Organizing your blogs are key. I used a wiki. The Epic Romeo and Juliet wiki was the epicromeoandjuliet.wikispaces.com. What was great about that, it was a place for me to organize all of my students' blogs. For me, that was over 100 blogs in my classes alone, and then you had about 50 more blogs of the other schools. So what this did was it gave us a location to organize all the blogs so kids could look at each other's blogs, comment on them, and create a more deep discussion. Another thing you can do with blogs is they can be a great place to store fun projects. I know this is a very long URL, but this kid blog, uh, Fifth Hour Super Secret Project, was student created and was a nice place to share it and then share this link to anyone we wanted. So the kids are really excited to share projects using the kid blog. Student work. I love giving kids a space to do their work and blogs are a wonderful spot to do that. Blogs can be used for anything. They can be used for art, they can be used for text, they can be used for video. Student work is a great thing for kids to have and to share. And here's a great page from a former student of mine that has taken a blog and shared it. And what she did was taking her artwork and sharing it with whoever wanted to see it. And there's a wonderful picture that she created all on a computer and then shared it uh, on her blog with people that wanted to read. And so student work is something that is very valuable to have kids share. It allows them to have a much wider audience than just a classroom teacher. So the first question is, you know, where should you start? Well, one place that I started was blogger.com. Blogger.com is through Google. So you set up a Google account, you create your blog, and it's a very simple site to use. This year, I had all of my students use their student email to create Google accounts and then create blogger accounts so that they all have their own personal blogger this year. And it's a spot where they've been placing all of their written work. So at the end of the year, my kids are going to have a complete portfolio of all of their writing from September until June. And Blogger was a great place to do that. It's a free service. It's got a lot of great uh, systems and widgets that you can add to it so kids can really create a space that best reflects their personality. But as a tool, Blogger is great because it is very simple. KidBlog is another wonderful resource to use in your class. Again, it's free. Kids do not need email addresses to use it. So for younger grades, KidBlog can be great. If you feel like you want a little more control on the blogs and who can see them, KidBlog is great because you can choose to lock them down or open them up. So when it comes to blogging, KidBlog is great if you want a little bit more control on the access to the blogs for the students. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, feel free to contact me either through email at onenerdyteacher at gmail.com. You can go to my website, thenerdyteacher.com, or you can find me on Twitter at thenerdyteacher. It's been great sharing this idea of blogging with you. I love what it's done for my class, and I hope you'll take a chance and use blogging in your class as well. Your students will definitely appreciate it. Thank you very, very much.